marine fouling and corrosion and over you. Lecture by Dr. G. Subramanian, Chief Scientist Retired, CSIR Central Electrochemical Research Institute. Marine fouling is an economically important problem facing all the maritime nations of the world. Marine falling organisms can affect the working installations in the sea and corrosion processes on their parts and lead to a special characteristics of corrosion. This biological process induces inconvenient effects on ships such as raising the frictional resistance, increase in the frequency of dry docking operations, the deterioration of the corrosion protection systems such as cathodic protection and anti-corrosive paint systems and the introduction of non-native species into, the given, into a given environment. The economic loss due to the marine falling can be realized from the fact that a barely visible 10 micron that is 1% increase in the average hull roughness due to falling and subsequent frictional surface resistance would result in increased fuel costs as much as 30% above. Our country's commercial and military interests alone incur an annual loss of 2-3% to of our GNP owing to marine falling and corrosion. Hence, marine falling is an important concern for the mariners as well as marine anti-falling paint manufacturers. What is falling? Falling is the undesired deposition of material on surfaces adopted from heat exchanger technology, this definition. Inorganic falling, that is precipitation of inorganic crystals and scaling. Organic falling, that is deposition of fat, oil, protein, etc. Particle falling, that is deposition of silt, clay, humic particles, etc. Biofalling. Deposition and growth of microorganisms on surfaces, particles which can multiply on the expense of nutrients. In a broad sense, what is biofouling? Undesired deposition and growth of microorganisms at interfaces. Biofouling is a biofilm problem. Dissolved substances are converted into locally accumulated biomass. Operational definition biofilm growth exceeding threshold of interference. Biofouling, a biofilm reactor in wrong place and time. Understanding biofilms is the key for sustainable anti-falling strategies. What are biofilms? Biofilms are collections of microorganisms, example bacteria, yeast and protozoa, that form on a hot surface. Some examples of biofilms are the plaque that forms on teeth and the slime that forms on surfaces in watery areas surrounded by slimy secretions. Over 90% of the all bacteria live in biofilms. Steps in biofilm formation. On the right side you can see six figures. A, B, C, D, E, F. So it has six stages. Stage A, formation of Conditioning flame, you can see figure on the top left side. Second one is primary adhesion reversible and irreversible, figure on the top right side. C. Formation of micro colonies surrounded by extra polymeric cellulose, extra polymeric substances, figure C, you can see on the left middle. Next stage is development of a continuous bioflame, figure D, you can see on the right side bot, right side middle. The next stage is sloughing off of biofilm parts, partial removal of the biofilm parts. Figure E, you can see on the bottom side of the left side. The final stage, F is transport of biofilm particles, flocks, throughout the system, initiation of further biofilm formation on the right side bottom most, figure F. So this A, B, C, D, E, F, six stages, six steps details the biofilm formation on a metal, on a substrate submerged in electrolyte. Medically relevant biofilms. The figure on the top left side gives you keratitis, 
due to the non compatible biofilm on cat contact lens the figure on the top right side gives you domestic biofilm in our bathrooms toilet rinsing water reservoir red and dark brown color or the bacterial and fungal biofilms in calciferous incrustations potential problem with this is dispersion of aerosols when flushing the figure on the bottom side gives you biofilm biofouling on teeth cause for bad breath and caries and the figure on the bottom right side gives you the scm of the slime layer form on our teeth gums you can see bacteria various bacteria of different sizes biofouling a serious problem for cooling cycles in energy industry what are the impact of this biofouling on these cooling cycles in energy industry first major uh, impact is heat transfer decrease in heat transfer increase of drag resistance both of them leads to bio corrosion a special type of corrosion on the bottom side you can see heat exchanger tubes how good intentions cause unexpected problems massive biofilm development in a heat exchanger due to biodegradable corrosion inhibitor steps of biofilm formation when a substrate is submerged in sea water or electrolyte immediately within seconds and minutes adsorption takes place that is nitrogen containing species and carbohydrate salts next stage is immobilization of bacteria the next stage is consolidation of exopolymers production the next stage is colonization biofilm consortium and the final stage is formation of macro falling which can see by our naked eye algae hot follows barnacle mollus oysters etc 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 this happens within uh, within one month time this is a sequence of biofilm formation on a substrate submerged in sea water formation of biofouling biofouling is not as simple as a process as it sounds organisms do not usually simply suck onto a substrate like a suction cup the complex process often begins with the production of a biofilm biofouling cycle a clean surface when submerged in sea water immediately within seconds or minutes organic film development takes place which leads to microfouling that is slime formation which contains bacteria and diatoms further larval recruitment and metamorphosis will take place on the surfaces which leads to macrofouling to the following uh, which leads to macrofouling then it results in formation of growth of larger sessile organisms like uh, soft falling organisms like algae and uh, hot fallers like barnacle and oysters again cleaning repair replacement then we make the surface very clean so this vicious cycle continues when submerged in sea water any substrate submerged in sea water it needs periodic maintenance formation of macro falling organisms the macro falling community consists of either soft falling or hot falling may develop and overgrow the micro falling soft falling comprises algae in which breeds such as soft corals sponges anemones tunicates hydroids hot falling comprises invertebrates such as barnacle mussels tube worms brazoans and seaweeds according to biofouling processes the following overlapping time sequence is observed bacteria appear approximately 1 to 2 hour diatoms after several hours spores of macro algae and protozoa after one week and larvae of macro folds after 2 to 3 weeks so within a month's time macro folding on a substrate submerged in sea water happens what are the implications of bio folding on submerged structures that is effects of bio folding both micro and macro folding in the world's ocean cause huge material and economic losses towards maintenance of marine culture facilities shipping facilities vessels and sea water pipelines by falling increases weight and frictional resistance of the ship thus affecting its hydrodynamics speed maneuverability maneuverability by falling is everywhere parts of a ship other than the hull are affected as well as 
heat exchangers, water cooling pipes, propellers, even the ballast water. By a falling on ship hulls is a powerful way of spreading species to new parts of the world, oceans, leading to bioinvasion, which is now recognized as a major threat to biodiversity. Heating and cooling systems biofoliage might also be found in power stations and factories. Just like a clogged drain in your kitchen or bathroom, buildup of matter inside cooling system pipes decreases performance. Again, falling causes a domino effect. Equipment must be cleaned frequently, at times with harsh chemicals, and the obstruction of piping can lead to shutdown of plants and economic losses. In aquaculture, biofouling problems are two types. One is on infrastructure, immerse mesh cages and trawls. Other is stock organisms, particularly mussels, oysters and scallops. Yet another place biofouling organisms lurk is piping and sprinkler system nozzles of the fire protection systems. The figure on the left side gives you biofouling accumulation for the period of 24 months, that is 2 years, on mild seal coupon of size 150 mm centimeter, 150 millimeter into 100 millimeter into 2 millimeter size. You can see dynamic varied type of organisms accumulated, covered on the steel surfaces, ranging from oysters, barnacles, Brazovan, Acidian, Mollus, Algae, etc., etc., etc. When you scrap the biomass, the fouling load is around about 5.6 kg per meter square, and the corrosion rate experienced by mild steel at open sea is 0.12 mm per year. The loss in tensile strength owing to exposure in the open sea of Totogorin for mild steel is about 31.25 percentage. On the right side, you can see the bare coupon after removing the biomass and after removing the corrosion products using a recommended pickling solution. You can see crevices beneath hot hollows like barnacle and oysters. Again, biofouling on mild steel exposed for two years in harbor water to go in. You can see the fouling load is about 5.4 kilogram per meter square. And the corrosion rate experience is 0.115 mm per year. The loss in tensile strength experienced by mild steel in harbor water is 21.88 percentage. You can see the bare mild steel coupon after removal of biomass and removal of corrosion products using recommended pickling solutions. You can see severe etchings and pits crevices beneath attachment of hot fowlers. By falling on mild steel, Coupon exposed for two years at Mandabam Coast, Gulf of Pannar Coast. Here you can see that compared to two green water, two green water is enriched with uh, all type of nutrients involved in its diverse nature. Whereas Mandabam, a remote area, which has not much industries and there is less pollution compared to two green waters, here hence the diversity of falling organisms. The fouling load of the fouling organisms on any metal exposed in mandabam waters will be less compared to Totogori. Likewise, the fouling load on mild steel is on, only 1.2 kg per meter square and the corrosion rate is 0.125 mm per year. The loss in tensile strength is 20.83. Here you can see the corrosion rate is more compared to Totogori waters because the fouling load is less here. And the loss in tensile strength is also less compared to Totogori uh, sea water coupons exposed. So in turn, the fouling load, lesser the fouling load, lesser will be the loss in tensile strength. By falling on structural steel exposed for two years at open sea to the the figure on the left side shows your diversified nature of fouling organisms adhered on st structural steel surfaces. Here the fouling load is 5.25 kg per meter square. The corrosion rate is 0.11 mm per year. The loss in tensile strength is about 23.16 percentage. The figure on the right side shows you after bare steel sur uh, structural steel surface after removal of biomass and corrosion products. You can see pits, 
crevices beneath the attachment of hot holders like barnacle and oysters. By falling on structural steel exposed for two years in harbor water to the green, here the falling load is 5.71 kg per meter square, corrosion rate is 0.125 mm per year, loss in tensile strength is about 17.75 percentage. You can see here on the figure on the right left side having diversified attachment of microphone organisms like barnacle, oysters, mollusk, uh, polycate worms, bryozoan, azidian, etc. etc. On the contrary, in the, in the figure on the right side, bare structural steel coupon after removal of biomass and corrosion products, you can see crevices and pits beneath the attachment of hot hollows. By falling on structural steel exposed at Mandabam Gulf of Pannar coast for two years, falling load on is about 2 kg per meter square, the corrosion rate is about 0.14 mm per year, the loss in tensile strength is about 15.58 percentage. Here also you can see the three exposure sites, locations exposed simultaneously for structural steel. The, law, the falling load is very less, only 0.2 kg per meter square, thereby the lo loss in tensile strength is also less compared to total green waters, 15.58. By falling on high strength low alloy steel exposed in open sea to the green for two years, you can see the left, on the left side shows you by falling severe by falling on high strength alloy steel, ranging from hot fallers, oysters, barnacle, mollusks, acidians, bryozoan, algae, etc., etc., etc. The falling load is 3.9 kg meter square. The corrosion rate is only 0 0.054 mm per year, and loss in tensile is about 77.2 percentage. The figure on the right side shows you the bare high strength alloy steel after removal of bio mass and corrosion products. You can see severe pits, crevices like tunneling corrosion. So uh, when you see the loss in tensile strength is about 77.2 percentage. So this kind of material we can't recommend for structures used in seawater, especially underwater, because this may lead to premature breakdown of collapse of the structures. So one has to be very careful before selecting a material of usage for seawater applications, especially for marine structures, submerged structures. By falling on high strength low alloy steel in harbor water to the grain, exposed for 24 months, that is two years, the falling load 3.9 kilogram per meter square Corrosion rate 0 0.032 mm per year, loss in tensile strength is about 68.3 percentage here. Again, the loss in tensile strength is about 68.3, which is concern. Concern, which is a great concern for marine engineers in selecting materials of construction, utility in especially under underwater structures. By falling on high strength alloy steel, in Gulf of Pannar coast Mandabam, exposed for two years. The falling load is only 0.8 kg per meter square, corrosion rate 0 0.044 mm per year, the loss in tensile strength is about 43.3 percentage. Here also you can see of the three locations, Totogreen Open Sea, Totogreen Harbor Water and Mandabam Gulf of Pannar coast, the loss in tensile strength is less at Mandabam waters compared to Totogreen waters. In general, high strength low alloy steel in all the three locations experience severe pitting crevices, see through crevices, tongue ending corrosion, all these things. So, this kind of alloy we can't select for usage in underwater application, especially in submerged conditions in seawater. Commercial copper exposed to natural seawater for two years at open sea, Totogreen. Harbour Water, Tutugurin and Gulf of Pannar Coast, Mandabam. Unlike ferrous alloys, copper alloys has a tendency to resist falling at least for a period of 3 to 6 months. The reason is, the moment copper alloys are exposed in sea water, it corrodes, it liberates, it dissolves, copper ion dissolves. So the dissolved copper ion, the leached copper ions, won't allow falling organisms to adhere on it. So it resists falling falling attachment at least for 3 to 6 months. But the moment the green adherent pattern of corrosion product is formed on copper alloy surfaces, 
submerged in sea water it loses its tendency of anti holing property so then uh, naturally holing organisms dare to attach on its surfaces with less intensity you can see here the corrosion rate measured in terms of milligram per decimeter square per day in open sea to grain is 2.98 in harbor water to grain is 2.95 at mandram is 6.8 mdd and the quantity of biomass is also very less compared to ferrocellulose is 0.14 at open sea kilogram per meter square and 0.23 at harbor water to grain at mandram it is very very negligible 0.3013 kilogram per meter square so at mandram you can see only slime slime scum there is no macrofolling organisms on copper commercial copper Primal brass exposed in natural sea water at three to, three different locations, totally in open sea, harbor water, total grain, and Gulf of Narco coast bandamam for two years. What is primal brass? Contains sixty forty copper, sixty and forty percent zinc. If you add one percent tin, it is called primal brass, which has both corrosion resistance as well as falling resistance. So here in the open sea, total grain, you can see the corrosion is about three point four four milligram per decimeter square per day. The biomass is about 0.114 kilogram per meter square. The major falling organisms are the figure on the left side gives you oyster, barnacle, slime scum. On the contrary, the harbor water to the water you can see dense attachment of polygate worms, barnacles. Here the corrosion rate is about 0.413 milligram per decimeter square per day, and the biomass is about 1.103 kilogram per meter square. On the contrary, in Mandamam, the cor- corrosion rate is about 4.49 mdd, and biomass is about 0.0146 kilogram per meter square. Mandamam, on the surface of the copan, of naval brass copan at Mandamam, you can see only major amount of slime scum, only one or two barnacles you can see. Copper nickel 7030 exposed in natural sea water for two years. At three different locations, open sea to the green, you can see the figure on the left side. It has major amount of only slime scum. The corrosion rate is about 1.8 mdd. At to the green harbor water, you can see a dense attachment of polygate worms, barnacles. Corrosion rate is about 1.36 mdd, and biomass is about 0.16 kilogram per meter square. At Mandamam water, you can see the figure on the right side. You can see slimes come only one barnacle is attached. So the corrosion rate is about 1.27 milligram per meter square per day, and biomass is about 0.031 kilogram per meter square. Copper nickel 9010 exposed in natural sea water at three different locations, Totigrain and Mandamam, for two years. You can see the figure on the left side. Open sea Totigrain. It has characteristics of barnacles. And uh, the middle, the middle figure shows you harbor to the water. You can see dense attachment of polygate worms, barnacles, bryozoans, etc., etc. At Mandamam, you can see on the left, right side, you can see slimes come, only few barnacles. The corrosion rate for open sea is about 0.33, and for harbor water is about 0.68, and for Mandamam it is 1.59. And biomass kilogram per meter square for open sea is 0.062 kilogram per meter square for harbor water 0.067 and Mandamam 0.043. The list of falling organisms on ferrous alloys exposed at Tutugurin, open sea, harbor water, and Mandamam Gulf of Narc coast. Algae nearly we identified about 40 types of marine algae, ranging from green algae, blue algae. Red algae and blue-green algae. Some of them are Entomorpha, Ketomorpha, Cladophora, Cladophora, Chlorodesmis, Microdiction, Rhizoclonium, Alva lactuca, Alva reticulatus, Pedina, Ectocarpus, Sphagellaria, Turbinaria, Genia, Centrosiras, Ceramium. Cruciatum, Grazilaria, Collarpa, Gelidium, Polysiphonia, Herposiphonia, Bryopsis, Hypnia, Acanthophora, Sargassum, Lingbia, Formidium. 
this lingbia problem or blue green algae under bryozoan you can see bugula nelatina bugula stolonifera membranipora species elella species electra species paskia species zubotrion species under mollusk there is oysters crassastria madrasensis crassastria cuculata crassastria cristagali modiolus pinctada facata pectens species orca rombia perna species polycate worms you can see polymnia likewise you can see about 7 to 9 hydroids serpola protola spidorbis and and uh, under barnacles you can see balanus amphitrite balanus reticul- reticulatus balanus amaryllis thalamus lepas balanus tintinabulum under tunicates you can see botulus botuloids leptoclinum dipolosoma dedemnum likewise uh, polyclinum simplegma under sponges you can see tedanus and helens polysiphonia so these algae soft pollening organisms they enhances oxygen of corrosion rate of uh, metal submerged in sea water when they attach on it on the interface of the algae by photosynthetic activity and also a putrefactive action when they decay by these two actions they enhances corrosion of the materials on which they attach falling organisms on copper alloys compared to ferrous alloys the falling density and the falling number of falling organisms on copper alloys are very less in view of their anti falling property falling resistance nature so for commercial copper falling organisms found to be or polycate worms and barnacles for naval bass it is algae polycate worms and barnacle for copper nickel 70 30 and copper nickel 90 30 90 it is algae molas that is oysters barnacles and polycate worms so these hot fallers beneath hot fallers like barnacle and oysters ferrous alloys experience crevices pits sometimes see through crevices and pits also on the contrary the hot fallers on copper alloys they won't cause crevices or pits in view of the anti falling nature of copper alloys thank you very much for listening and watching this video